All right, so we are going to do a basic DWC or deep water culture hydroponics bucket setup. We're starting from scratch and you will probably save yourself, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks doing it this way. I mean, you can buy some cheap kits out there, but what I'm gonna show you today is a dual purpose um, DWC setup. Now basically DWC, when you start as a basic kit, um, is just an air stone and some water that goes up to your net pot, one inch below the net pot, and your net pot has your medium in it with your plants on top. And what happens is that air stone creates small air bubbles in the water that come up and break the surface tension and splash onto the material that you have below. And essentially, that material is supposed to wick that water up to the roots, and the roots grow down into the water. Now, the setup that I'm going to show you also will incorporate the General Hydroponics Farm Kit, which is actually a drip ring around the top. Okay, and what that will allow is for uh, any kind of propagation, seedlings, and anything that needs immediate water. Um, with roots basically that don't extend halfway down your uh, net pot inside that's going to absorb the water coming from the bottom. And you can always disconnect the drip uh, setup once you're using the airstone primarily. Some people like to use both because they think it makes a difference. I don't see a difference. Um, I, st I will start with the drip ring at the top and then finish off with um, just the air stone in the bottom. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set it up for that, but any DWC, I like to have a tube, okay? Now this tube here is from the farm kit. You can probably craft your own. Basically it's an elbow with some tubing. Um, I'm not sure exactly what size this is. It's probably like a half inch um, tube elbow and some tubing. But what this does is this allows you to see where your water level is and you can add your nutrients through here, you can add water through here, you can filter out some water. Um, this is going to be your cleaning mechanism and also your, you know, if you need to test pH and stuff so you don't always have to crack the seal on your net pot exposing your roots all the time to light and, and all that good stuff. Um, so any good DWC bucket will have one of these installed. And this is where the cost really comes in. Because this kit by itself is like 13 bucks. And that's uh, probably 75% of what it costs to make this entire setup. But any good DWC will have this. Um, it's a monitoring system and it works great. The other advantage to having this is again your clean out. You've got to clean out your DWC every one to two weeks max, uh, just so you're not building up all that sediment and stuff in there from your mediums and whatnot. All right, so buy yourself a farm kit and it will allow you to, you know, use the drip ring as well, okay? It comes with everything you need. The tube, the drip ring, air hose, the grommet that connects your elbow into the bucket, and your tube holder. So with that said, you really only need a drill with a quarter inch bit and something that will allow you to drill the hole for your uh, grommet. And the size you're going to need is 13 sixteenths. I'm using this uh, multi bit here, but you can use a paddle bit if that's easier for you. Uh, I've never tried this, so we're going to give this a shot today. Um, I take that back. I've never tried this for this particular um, purpose in a bucket, so we'll see how well it slides or stays in place. And we're going to go ahead and start with that, so let me get my drill ready here. So one other thing before you get drilling, you want to check the bottom of your bucket. Okay, there's going to be a lip here, and on mine, there's a concaved um, bottom to this. 
This is a leak tight bucket. It's black. I wouldn't suggest. I would suggest nothing but black. Um, now this particular bucket goes in about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so which means I need to go at least a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. That's where the you can feel on my bucket where the base is on the uh, side here, and I want to go about a half inch minimum to an inch above. Okay, so for me, I'm just going to go ahead and do basically half a finger's length. If I can get that in focus, half a finger's length up, and I'm going to go into about right here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of mark that area of my bit so I know. Now the next thing, it's a personal preference, but I like to have the handle swing towards the tube. You don't want to put, obviously, the tube where the handle is because it's going to be up here and that's going to get in the way. So pick the flat face, okay, we're going to go up again about half a finger's width, which takes me to about an inch above that baseline. I'm going to try and center it up as much as possible here, so I got my mark in my eye, and here we go. Also taking into account the uh, size of the bit. So we went ahead and did that, and let me show you what we ended up with. So that's why I like using that bit. There's literally nothing inside. It spirals it up, this plastic is great, and you can see how far away from the base I am, okay? So inside it's literally about half an inch from the base. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take that grommet, okay? And this one doesn't give a size either. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of spit. And I'm gonna work it in. So, now that the grommet's in, we're good to go. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to swap out your bit. Okay? You're going to put in your quarter inch bit. All right, quarter inch bit's on. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the elbow, again, use uh, some soapy water or whatever on the elbow piece itself. Okay? A little soapy water here, slide it in until it's nice and snug, which you want it to be all the way against this last piece of the elbow. All right, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna use a little bit of saliva because it's all I got at the moment. It's like giving a wet willy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and work this in. Let's line it up, nice and straight, and quarter inch. Here we go. All right, pop the ring in. It clicks and the tube is in, just like that. So now all you need to do is figure out what kind of system you're gonna have. Are you gonna have multiple air lines with multiple air stones in here? If so, you're going to drill holes for your tubing, okay? This is just basic tubing, quarter inch drill bit will do the job. I'm just going to put one air hose in because I'm only going to use one air stone. So here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and use the same level of ribs here. So I'm going to go ahead and go over about an inch or two and drill my hole. Perfect. All right, now as far as the basic DWC, so your air line will go in. You'll hook up your air stone once the line is in. It's going to drop down into the bucket. The reverse side will go to your air pump. And then your net pot. This here is a 10 inch net pot because I'm gonna have some pretty big plants in here. Uh, they make these in multiple sizes. This was like four bucks at the local hydroponics store, okay? This is just going to 
go right up on top here. It'll click down and there's your DWC. Super simple, took less than 10 minutes and that's with me doing the video. I've got three more buckets to do. I could do all three of them in less than five minutes. Now, here's the, here's the advanced DWC setup, okay? The advanced DWC setup, which I was just mentioning before, uses the drip ring, all right? So that with the drip ring, it's going to install So you have a drip ring, right? Your net pot's going to be in top. Your drip ring is going to be installed just like this. Okay. What happens is this drip ring just literally drips water or nutrients or whatever into your medium. Okay. And to, to get this installed, we need to now work on the net pot. All right. So to set up the advanced portion of this again with the drip ring take a look at the bottom of your drip ring tube okay you need to be able to install this down in the bottom of the net basket so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out one of these support bars here it won't affect anything and it, this will just slide right through okay and you want it to be the last rib in your net pot so that this has somewhere stable to stand up against okay for that, I'm just going to use a heavy pair of scissors and I'm going to cut this rib out. Okay, so as you can see, I cut out that bottom rib with a pair of scissors. Now the drip ring will slide right through. All right, just like that. And I don't know if this was done on purpose as part of the design, but there's a lip on the tube that actually stops right against that, that bar so it won't slide anywhere. Now you can take a zip tie, a small zip tie, and fasten this if you want. Um, I find that I don't need to because I use hydrotin clay pellets in there and uh, it puts enough pressure against this that this won't move once it's filled up and especially once they're wet. Now, all there is to it Okay, just to drop it in the bucket. You can position this pretty much anywhere in the bucket. And again, once the medium is in there, this will stay stable. Okay, and for those of you that aren't familiar with how a drip ring works, let's pretend that instead of an air stone down here, we're going to take the air hose from the air pump. Okay. Get this in, in focus here. And there's a little nipple at the top of this drip ring. And you just apply the air line right up on top, just like that. So it'll sit there like this. Not only with the drip ring, but as a DWC as well, this tube is still required. If you're using just the drip ring, this will still monitor your water level. You can use the drip ring by itself, the air stone by itself, or use both. Get the best of both worlds. It's up to you. You are the creator of your own hydroponic system at this point. Grow what you want, where you want, spend less money doing it. All right. Well, I hope you learned something. Please feel free to comment. Send me some messages if you need some assistance. Um, I will add one more tip, and I'll do a video on this later. But use a one-gallon uh, milk jug or something like that. Go ahead and fill this up. Make sure there's no leaks. All right. And as you're filling it up one gallon at a time, take a marker of some sort and mark on there your gallon increments, okay? Now, while this is a five gallon bucket, depending on how low your net pot is, again, mine's 10 inch, so it comes almost halfway through the bucket, 
I'm really only going to have two and a half, three gallons of water that I'm ever going to work with. If you have a smaller net pot, you may have four gallons. You will never have five gallons of water in this bucket, even though it's a five gallon bucket. You will never have that water above your medium in the net pot. If you do, you're just asking for trouble. So calculate it out. Do one gallon at a time, mark it, another gallon, mark it, another gallon, mark it. And I always put a number on there. And then I will take the net pot and kind of guesstimate where in the bucket it is and mark that with a different indicator. So I will usually use like gold um, Sharpie marker and mark it somewhere here on the bucket itself so I know where that net pot's sitting. Just so that when I go to fill this, I know how close to the net pot I am. All right. Well, again, hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Adios.